haven't yet. And also make sure to hit that notification bell because that notifies you whenever new videos of mine come out. But today is exciting because today I wanted to talk about and count down the top 10 best new Nike shoes of 2020. So the criteria for a shoe to make the list was pretty simple. It had to be a Nike sneaker, obviously, and it had to come out this year, meaning not just a colorway of this shoe, but the whole silhouette itself. Not only that, but I also tried to make this list a little bit more budget friendly and only put shoes on the list that you can actually go out to retail stores and find. I didn't put any crazy hyped up collaborations on the list like Travis Scott's or Sakai's. There are one or two shoes on the list that might be sold out at the moment, but I'm sure in the next couple weeks they'll come into stock, but probably in a different colorway. The reason I wanted to make this list was to highlight some really great new Nike shoes that people might not know about, and it also might be a good way to give you some Christmas gift ideas. So I made sure to add links to all of the sneakers that we're going to talk about in today's video in the description below if you would like to check them out. But without further ado, let's jump right into it. So starting things off at number 10, we've got the Nike Air Max 2090. Released earlier this year on Air Max Day, the Nike Air Max 2090 is heavily inspired by the Nike Air Max 90. Because of that heavy Air Max 90 inspiration, that's the reason this shoe is called the 2090. What I love about this shoe is that it features a lot of the design details from the Air Max 90, which is one of my favorite sneakers of all time, and incorporates them in a much more modernized silhouette. The Air Max 90 features what seems to be the Air Max 270's heel air unit. However, this time around, it's partially encapsulated, so it can't compress as much, which means it's not going to be as squishy underfoot. For some people, that might be a bad thing, but for me, I really like it because it makes the shoes feel more stable underfoot than the 270s do. The forefoot of the shoe features what Nike calls springy foam, I'm assuming it's just some kind of EVA, and the upper of the shoe has an internal booty construction as well as a new speed lacing system which apparently increases the speed at which you can lace your shoes. I don't know if that's BS, it sounds like BS, and when I had the shoes it didn't really feel any faster, but maybe they do, I don't remember. In my opinion, the main selling point for this $150 sneaker, which you can actually find on sale for $120 at a lot of different places, is the design. It's a clean, modern, and everyday sneaker that's pretty easy to throw on with pretty much any fit, and it's comfortable, which is always a good thing. At number 9, we've got the upcoming Nike Air Max Zephyr. As of right now, mid-November 2020, this shoe has still not released. However, it does look like the shoe is dropping sometime in December. So the reason I put the shoe on the list, even though I've never tried it on, is that I think it's such a great looking sneaker. Not only that, but the Nike Air Max Zephyr is the first Air Max model to feature an air unit, on the upper. Not sure why that's a good thing, don't think it helps with the comfort at all, but it looks dope, and for me that's all that really matters. <laughs> that's not true, but since I haven't tried the shoe on, I can't really talk about comfort yet, can I? The super modern and organic paneling on this shoe looks incredible. I love the futuristic vibe that this shoe has, and even though the air unit on the upper of the shoe is kind of a weird touch, it makes it unique, and that's what I like about it. Even though we can't try this shoe on yet, we do have some idea of how this shoe will feel on foot because it features a 720 air unit which has been on other sneakers, namely the Air Max 720. This air unit actually covers a majority of the outsole of the sneaker and provides a very bouncy if not trampoline like ride. Maybe you're not into that, I don't mind it, I kind of feel like I'm bouncing with every step, but it is a weird feeling for sure. But make sure to stay tuned because as soon as the Nike Air Max Zephyr finally releases, I will be giving you all a full review. Coming in at number 8, we've got the Nike Air Zoom Type. This Japanese street culture inspired sneaker features a split midsole and a very DIY aesthetic. This shoe first released as a collaboration with a Japanese designer on just the Nike app that actually allowed you to customize the way that the sneaker looked even though it was already a collaboration. You could literally Nike ID this sneaker as soon as it came out, even though it was a collaboration, which is kind of weird. Since the interesting customizable first release of this shoe, Nike has released more standard colorways that people seem to enjoy. As for underfoot comfort, this shoe features a zoom air unit in the forefoot and stacked foam towards the heel, as well as a TPU plate which should help with stability. Even though the shoe features a lot of Nike's newer running technology, it's still definitely much more of a lifestyle sneaker than anything else. So if you're grabbing the shoe, keep that in mind. After that, at number 7, we've got the Nike Adapt BB 2.0. Like the original version of this shoe which released a year earlier, the Nike Adapt BB 2.0 features self-lacing technology. Nike has created a self-lacing basketball sneaker that has been worn by professional NBA players in NBA games and continues to be worn by NBA players in NBA games. If you don't know how this shoe works, there is literally a motor underneath your foot in the shoe. There are essentially wires on top of your feet in this shroud that, as the motor spins, it tightens those wires and tightens the shoe around your feet. And what's crazy to me is that like 300 pound people can be running around in this shoe, jumping and landing on this motor, and it still works fine. It's an insane shoe, they must have put a ton of R&D into this sneaker, and I've got to say, I think it's an incredible feat of technology. In addition to being able to tighten and loosen the shoe by pressing the buttons on the side of the sneaker, you can also adjust the fit through an app on your phone. Not only that, the way that you charge the shoe is by putting it on a wireless charger. It charges through the outsole of the sneaker. It's insane. But honestly, 
actually the craziest part about this whole thing is that this sneaker only costs 350 bucks, which yes, I know is a huge amount of money, but for a self-lacing shoe that charges wirelessly and can be worn by NBA players, 350 bucks is nothing. And in my opinion, it also looks pretty good too. And I definitely think it looks better than last year's version. So if you're looking for an auto lacing pair of basketball sneakers, well, this is actually really your only choice. Next up at number six, we've got the Nike Kyrie 7. Now, unfortunately, unlike the last shoe, this sneaker doesn't lace itself, but it is $220 cheaper. It's also honestly just a better basketball sneaker overall in general. The Nike Kyrie 7 is an accumulation of all the different learnings from previous Kyrie sneakers, all rolled into one shoe to make it the best Kyrie sneaker ever. The Nike Kyrie 7 features a large four foot air zoom turbo unit, which allows for some really nice cushion underneath your forefoot. But even with that though, the Kyrie model focus more on court feel than underfoot comfort and they're definitely tailored more towards guards than forward. So if you're looking for a basketball shoe that's more focused on traction and maneuverability than underfoot cushion, the Kyrie line is a good way to go. Visually, the Kyrie 7 looks a lot like a lot of the previous Kyrie sneakers and I think that's a good thing especially for Kyrie fans. For 130 bucks, the Kyrie 7 is a solid mid-range basketball sneaker that I definitely recommend picking up if you're a guard. After that at number 5, we've got the Nike LeBron 18. When it comes to basketball sneakers, the LeBron 18 is kind of on the complete opposite side of the spectrum from the Kyrie 7. LeBron basketball sneakers are heavily focused on underfoot comfort, and because of that, these shoes feature huge air units under your feet. Not only that, but apparently the LeBron 18 also features an air unit in the tongue, which I've never really heard of, but sounds great. The upper of the LeBron 18 is made up of Nike's proprietary knit posit, which is a combination of knits that are sort of pressed with some plastics. I'm not exactly sure how it works, but it contains your foot really well, and it feels good on your feet. I do think I prefer preferred the way that the LeBron 17 looked over the LeBron 18, but the 18 is still a good looking sneaker. At $200 though, the LeBron 18 is definitely on the high end of basketball performance sneakers and is one of the more premium models available. The LeBron 18 is a solid basketball sneaker and if you're willing to put up the cash for it, I don't think you'll regret it. After that, at number 4, we've got the Nike Space Hippie 01. This is the shoe that I was talking about at the beginning of the video that's currently sold out and the reason for that is because people really seem to love this shoe. The Nike Space Hippie 01, just like all of the other shoes in the Space Hippie collection, is a shoe primarily made up of recycled materials. I think the exact phrasing that Nike used when describing this sneaker was that 50% of the weight of this shoe is made up of recycled materials. I think that's a fancy way of saying less than 50% of the shoe. I'm a huge fan of recycled sneakers and shoes that utilize a lot of recycled materials, so the Space Hippie collection was right up my alley. The Space Hippie 01 features a knit upper that's made up of 90% recycled polyester, which I think is so cool, and the midsole and outsole of the shoe feature Nike Grind. Nike Grind is ground up midsoles and outsoles of other Nike sneakers that has been mixed in with the midsole foam of this shoe. My favorite part of Nike Grind is actually the way that the Nike Grind looks when it's in the outsole of the sneaker. It gives the shoe a very cool, like, speckled look. Not only that, but inside the midsole of the shoe, Nike's actually used excess foam from other sneakers that they've made to create the cushioning for this sneaker. And actually, another really cool thing that Nike does with their Space Hippie sneakers is when they ship you the shoes, it doesn't come in two boxes, a shoe box and then an outer box. It just comes in one box, essentially the shoe box, which has also been made a shipping box, and it doesn't even feature paper around the sneakers to conserve paper. The whole project is so cool, and it's awesome to see Nike focus on sustainability. I know I only put the Space Hippie 1 on the list, but really any of the Space Hippie sneakers could go in the same spot on the list. At number three, we've got the Nike Zoom Alpha Fly Next Percent. This shoe is specifically designed for marathon runners and breaking speed records. It's a crazy sneaker. In fact, a prototype of the Alpha Fly Next Percent is the shoe that Eulid broke the marathon record in. Now to be fair, there's been some speculation about whether this shoe gives runners an unfair advantage, but as a casual runner, I want that advantage and I wanna feel really fast. And this shoe makes me feel really, really fast. Just to clarify, I don't actually think that this shoe gives runners an unfair advantage and it can still be used in marathons. Compared to my other running sneakers though, I do actually run faster in this shoe. I'm not even gonna lie about that. This shoe features one of the most insane midsole setups I've ever seen on any shoe. It features two Zoom Air units underneath the forefoot, a super thick Zoom X foam cushion throughout the midsole of the shoe, and then a full length carbon fiber shank plate. Honestly, when it comes to running sneakers, I've never felt anything quite like this underneath my foot. It feels like you're stepping into a pillow, but also bouncing off a trampoline at the same time. It's the craziest experience. In addition to that, the overall weight of the shoe is basically nothing, which is helped by the Adam knit on the upper. As of right now, I think this is the most advanced marathon running shoe available. I don't think you can buy anything crazier than this. Now to be fair, all this technology does come at a price. It's a $275 shoe, and it's not that durable, so it's not going to last you that long. But if you've got a marathon coming up, or you just want to experience the most insane underfoot cushion ever, 
this is the shoe to grab. Coming in at number two, we've got the Nike Air VaporMax 2020. So up until recently, I just wasn't a fan of the VaporMax line. Then the VaporMax 2020s came out and everything changed. The VaporMax 2020 is a complete redesign of the Nike VaporMax. Yes, it looks pretty similar, and yes, there are some things about it that I don't love, but overall, it's an awesome sneaker. First off, the Nike VaporMax 2020 features a brand new air unit on the outsole, which is made up of 75% recycled TPU. We talked about the Space Hippies already, I told you guys how much I love recycled materials on shoes, and this is just such a bonus for this sneaker. Personally though, I think performance-wise, this air unit is a huge improvement over the previous VaporMaxes, because it's a little bit smaller, which means it's not as unstable, and it just feels better underfoot. Not only that, but the upper has also been completely redesigned. It still features Flyknit, which still feels incredible on foot, and I think this new version of Flyknit has some recycled materials in it, which of course is a good thing. The tongue of the sneaker is also changed up a little bit and features recycled foams, which makes it softer than the original Flyknit tongue, which I definitely prefer. But weirdly enough, the biggest change between last year's VaporMax and this year's VaporMax is the brand new lacing system. No, it doesn't have standard laces anymore, it's got a fly lacing system. Rather than tying the laces on the VaporMax like you usually would with most other shoes, you actually pull a pull tab towards the heel of the sneaker. By pulling that pull tab in the heel, it actually pulls these wires over top of your foot closer together, which tightens the shoe. Actually very similarly to the way that the Nike Adapt BB tightens your shoe. Except obviously without motors. And then to get out of the shoe, you just pull a pull tab on the top of the tongue and that completely loosens the shoe. It really is a very futuristic looking shoe. I like the way that it looks, I like the way that it feels on foot. I'm all about it. Now with all of that being said, it's not cheap, it's a $220 shoe, but if you're into the shoe and you like the fact that it's recycled, it's definitely worth picking up. And then finally, at number one, we've got the Nike Air Zoom Pegasus 37. Nike Pegasus sneakers have been some of the most popular Nike running sneakers for years, and it makes sense because they're a really great all-around running shoe. But over the last few years, it hasn't really felt like the lines progressed that much. They've made small changes that have made the shoes incrementally better, but they've never really made a huge leap. In my opinion, all of that changed this year though with the Nike Pegasus 37. Visually, the Peg 37 looks a lot like the Peg 36. However, they've completely changed up the midsole. The cushioning on the Pegasus 37 is incredible, and that's not just because they added a larger zoom air unit in the forefoot, but it's also because they switched out the standard Phylon for React foam. Nike React is a super soft and bouncy foam that's used primarily on running sneakers and is one of the most comfortable foams underfoot that I've ever felt. And that paired with the zoom air unit in the forefoot makes the Nike Pegasus 37 an incredibly comfortable shoe underfoot. No, it's not the flashiest shoe in the world, but for 120 bucks, you're getting a shoe which features incredible underfoot comfort and is also a solid lifestyle and running sneaker. It's crazy how much I wear this shoe. I wear it almost every single day and I have over 100 pairs of shoes. I love this sneaker. If you're looking for a comfortable everyday shoe that also doubles as an excellent running sneaker, the Nike Pegasus 37 is a great way to go. But with that, we wrap up the video for today. Now, I would love to know your thoughts on all of the shoes that we talked about in today's video, so make sure to let me know in the comments section down below. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet, and I'll see you all in the next one.